your video will start in just a second. I just want to say thank you for uh, checking out this video, and then there will be some other videos as well on my channel from the 2014 Ellie Auto Show, and uh, some also some how-to videos. So if you like what you see, go ahead and hit subscribe, and I would really appreciate it. Uh, any feedback, go ahead and leave in the comment section. Thank you. So new for 2015, we have a new F-150 here at the Los Angeles Auto Show. It is available in the trim levels that we that we're accustomed to: the XL, XLT, Lariat, and King Ranch, and Platinum. Uh, it goes anywhere from $25,000 base price up to the $50,000 plus range. So as you can see, they've done a lot here to change it up a lot. And, uh, and that includes aluminum. You can hear it here. And uh, the only thing that concerns me there, obviously, is uh, what the insurance companies are going to think about that. Uh, there's a lot of things that were done for aerodynamics at lower valence. Uh, also, you can see we've got some new rims here, galvanized calipers. like to see that. Um, we also have new engine options, which we'll be looking at shortly here. Uh, we have uh, more of a super duty looking exterior. I, they, I know they've been kind of leaning towards this as they've gone on, but every variation has come up a little more that direction. You'll see the tailgate kind of looks like the Dodge Ram a little bit. Um, you'll see the step there. I always like that. That is not new, but it's still cool to see. It's spring loaded. So you just undo that, and that's obviously going to be available on the upper end trims. This vehicle we're looking at currently is a Lariat. And as you can see, the bed has all the tie downs you would expect, and LED light on the tailgate end of there. That's actually really cool to have because usually that's where you have trouble seeing. There's the tailgate and the rear bumper. Um, you're going to see there's a backup camera integrated in there and also the handle to release it. There's struts in the tailgate. allows it to come down slowly. And I love when Toyota did that, and I'm glad everyone else has followed suit because that is definitely a good feature to have. So we're going to go ahead and take a look in here a little bit. You can see very clean, you know. They didn't even paint over the, the bolts, which I like because if you ever have to remove those or do anything, you don't want any paint on there. You can see they integrated a step into the tailgate there to help you because all the bed heights are pretty high now. Uh, there's your bumper with your chair lane connections and also a tailgate lock that seems to be in a weird spot, but hey, if it if that's where it needs to go, that's that's perfectly fine. Under the bottom here, I'm trying to take a picture of the get, get a video of the um, hitch. It appears to be bolted on, not welded to the frame, which is perfectly fine. Sorry, it just didn't really come out there. I'm also going to look at the rear end here. There's the rear end, and uh, they they this is a four x four model. They have moved everything up to the higher end of the rear end there, so that it doesn't get caught on anything, which is nice. Uh, it's rear disc. Move on to the interior. This is your steering wheel, leather steering wheel. Remember, this is a Lariat, so it's a little higher end. On the inside here, you got your gauges are analog, and then the center is digital. This is a higher end model, so you're not going to see that on the lower end models. So you got, you know, obviously your touch screen right there, leather power seats. So nothing that we don't expect from Ford. Uh, switch gear looks pretty much down on par with what we've seen before. And it's uh it's it's high in quality. I mean the materials here are are very good, especially for a mid-range truck. You get a lot for your dollars here. So as you can see, this is the overhead console. This is where you're going to store your sunglasses. Um, it looks like it does appear to have home link there as well, and uh, controls for your sunroof. Uh, you're not all going to see a sunroof, but on this model you will uh, not capacitive button these are real buttons which is nice two usb hookups sd card for i'm guessing the navigation and push button start on this sucker as well that's just that's pretty good so we're going to go to the rear of the vehicle uh, rear uh, seats of the vehicle now and uh, i like the the handle being right there that's a nice spot for it it's uh, really uh, hidden um here's your center console in the rear so i just flips down like that you got your storage back here which I did find, find it kind of odd that you only get one power outlet, I, you know, and that is what it is. But I like to see a couple more back there because usually kids are fighting over who gets to charge their phone. Uh, panoramic sunroof on the top there. Uh, I'm guessing that's going to be around $2,000 option based on what I've seen before. And uh, I always like to look at these engine cutaways. First thing we're going to look at here is the 5 liter um, Coyote V8. And uh, this is one they've already been using. There's not much change as far as this one goes. Uh, it's still the 385 horsepower, 387 foot-pounds of torque that we've seen before. It's a very, very good uh, mid-range engine. Uh, the next two engines we're going to look at, though, are the turbo versions, and this is the 3.5 liter, which has had some changes made to it. And then one of them is one I like, and that's integrating the exhaust manifold to the head itself. So 
there's no headers. It actually, uh, the casting itself, the head contains the exhaust manifold inside of it, and then it runs straight to the turbo. So it goes four to one directly to the turbo, which is really nice. So um, there's two. Uh, there's two that they have here. They had the 3.5 liter, and they also have the new 2.7 liter, which uh, looks pretty darn cool. Um, numbers on that are going to be 325 horsepower, 375 foot pounds of torque. No miles per gallon have been uh, released yet, but uh, I expect that shortly. But they've definitely used a compacted engine here to, to, to get this power. And I'm really interested to hear um, how, how it does. I mean, they, they went and they used a lot of different materials that they haven't used before on these smaller motors. And one of them is the, uh, the compacted graphite uh, block, and that's the same as what they use on the power, power stroke. So that's definitely, uh, they're looking to add long longevity and not get people worried about longevity with a smaller motor with the dual turbos on it. So, uh, you know, they do, you know, everyone uses now the composite intakes and the composite oil pans, and it's all to save weight. I mean, overall, they're saying that they've knocked off 700 pounds off the entire vehicle by using the aluminum, um, aluminum fenders and hood and now obviously going to the engine as well and, and deleting weight there. So I had video of the XL, which is a lower um, line one, but unfortunately it got cut short. So we'll just jump over here to the King Ranch. Um, this is the highest you can get before you head up to with the Platinum. Uh, King Ranch is gonna run you around $50,000 base price plus options. So the one we're looking at here is probably in the mid 50s to low 60s range. You get your uh, custom embroidery, uh, all the same options, just different colors. So uh, this truck's going to look pretty much identical, with the exception of, like, obviously the embroidery and the coloring. So as you can see, uh, this one's decked out, probably every option that's available on it. And uh, we even get the, its own wheels as well, which is probably pretty cool. Last vehicle we're going to be looking at is the XL. Unfortunately, the video I had on this got lost, so I have to just slow mo the front here. But this is basically what it looks like. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and also uh, comment below. So thanks for watching and have a great day.